Okay, so here's a question. Another question. You've got ethane gas undergoing combustion with this balanced equation. It's one mole of that, so I balance it for one mole of this undergoing combustion to form carbon dioxide and water vapor because we're combusting it in an open environment. So, and by the way, ethane is 20% of uh, natural gas. So this is a, a reaction that occurs when you're burning natural gas to uh, heat up your house or if you live in a warm climate, climate to be able to produce electricity to make your air conditioner work. Okay, so here combusting this gas to make CO2 and H2O gas. What's the delta H? And you're saying, well, Kim Guy, if you gave me uh, a bunch of equations to add together, I could actually calculate uh, from using Hess's law, I could actually calculate that delta H. And I say, nope, not giving you any equations to add together. Okay, give me some calorimetry information. I could do heat loss equals heat gain. I could do some MC delta T's and NH's, and I could actually... Nope, not giving you that. Okay. So if I don't give you anything other than the equation and say, calculate the delta H, what are you going to do? What you do is, you recognize this. Well, this isn't forming from its elements. But in order to make this reaction occur, you got to break it down into its elements. So if you had the molar heat of formation of this chemical right here, which is ethane, but you reversed it, that would be the molar heat of decomposition. And if you took that heat of decomposition of this chemical, and then the heat of formation of these chemicals multiplied by their coefficients in front, you actually come up with that change in energy that you require. So here's how we do it in a formula type of way. We say this. The sum of the heats of formation of the products, because these products are forming, if we take their heats of formation, because they have to form on that product side from these reactants, and we add those heats of formation together, but two of those and three of those. So actually, you should put number of moles in front here as well in the formula. The number of moles that you have to multiply by. And you subtract from that the heats of the reactants. What do you mean subtract? No, 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 what that subtraction sign does is it changes the sign from a heat of formation here into one that's a decomposition. So all you have to do is just say the sum of the heats of formation of the products minus the heat of formation of this, which turns it into decomposition, is going to give you the delta H. And that's Hess's law, but in a shortcut version. Okay, so now when you actually plug the numbers in, the delta H is going to equal the sum of the heats of formation of the products. Well, what is the heat of formation of CO2? It's negative 393.5 kilojoules for one mole of CO2. But you don't have one mole, you have two moles here. So when you multiply two moles of CO2 times that heat of formation right there, the moles cancel and you're left with that times two. See the way I wrote it out? It's all beautiful. It's got the unit cancellation going. Do it. Now, three moles of H2O gas. Here's the heat of formation for water as a gas. And there is, that's the heat of formation for one mole, right? So multiply by three. There you go right there. Sum of the heats of formation of products minus the sum of the heats of formation of the reactants. And that negative turns that negative into a positive or into a heat of decomposition. It requires that much energy to break that down. Beautiful. So what's missing? Well, with the oxygen, elements have no heat of formation. We ascribe them that in order to be able to do these calculations. And that was already taken into account when we actually got all of these heats of formation to begin with. So here's the thing. Elements do not have the heat of formation. Their heat of formation is zero. Actually, when you get to the thermodynamics unit, the delta G for any element is also zero, but not its entropy value, which is called S. Okay, that's later. <laughs> now, here's the thing. That calculation right there, when you do it, you're going to get a delta H of negative 1428.4 kilojoules. Kilojoules per mole? Well, yeah, it is the kilojoules per mole of that in the equation. That number is this delta H here. But you don't write per mole because all the moles canceled. Because that is the amount of heat that is released when one mole of that reacts. True. But it's also the amount of heat that's released when seven halves of that reacts. Okay? or when three, two moles of that form or three moles of the water form. So the delta H is always written just in kilojoules, not per mole. It's per whatever you're talking about in the equation, right? 
and also take a look. Some of you are going to say, hey, Kim guy, you just slipped there, man, because that's three sig digs and you kept five. How could you do that? No, 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 listen. I know this sounds kind of weird, but here's the thing. This is all addition and subtraction, and I didn't do any multiplication here. Really, when you have two of these, two times this, you're really taking this and adding it together twice, aren't you? You're really taking this exact number and you are multiplying it by this, which is really just adding three of these together, isn't it? Because the significant digit rule actually is, when you multiply an inexact number by an exact number, you retain the least number of decimal places. It's really because you're just adding a bunch of those numbers together. All of these heats of formation, generally on charts, have one number after the decimal. So if they all have one number after the decimal, and all you're doing is addition and subtraction here, then you retain the least number of decimal places, which is one number after the decimal. Well, there you go. Negative 1428.4 is the delta H for that reaction. Now let's add a little bit of stoichiometry into this too.